another one of Maxwell Star's computer-related videos. Tonight we're going to take a look at a, a new build. Um, this is not an upgrade to my existing main computer, but this is actually a project computer that I've been working on uh, for the last little while. Um, so don't mind me, y'all knew that I was a, uh, a computer geek as well as a beer geek, so bear with me here. I'm um, going to take a look and nerd out for a bit and uh, show you what I'm up to. You uh, technologically inclined viewers out there might be interested in seeing this, so let's take a look. So what I'm doing right now is um, previously I had a, uh, a lab computer, like basically this whole desk area is my workbench. I have a KVM with a monitor that allows me to work on two computers at once and, you know, I've got Litters of uh, a litter of uh, basically older and newer computers laying around the house that uh, you know I like we're playing on from time to time. Some people you know that um, I've also got a collection of vintage computers. I have posted a video of my PCXT which I recorded right here on this desk one time. So, um, so taking a look here, uh, this is a more modern project. After all, I bought a bunch of new parts here instead of uh, use, it's not all used parts this time. So what's going on is that previously I had a machine that I used for, or I was planning to use for do, studying um, like a computer lab that supported virtualization. Uh, anybody who doesn't know what virtualization is, virtualization is kind of the capability of a computer to run as uh, like several virtual computers inside of it. So, in, say in theory, like uh, a server rack or something from like like 10 years ago would have required, say, 10 servers to, or sorry, not 10, let's, let's go with four, keep it simple. Um, a server that required four servers, you know, seven, eight, ten years ago, uh, and today could run off of one system and there'd probably be room for more um, in the way that you can emulate like four subcomputers all on one system. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm hoping to do some like build a system here that's capable of running four computers like four virtual machines or more um, on one system and this is my project. So let's take a look. All right, so here's the parts for my new system. Now, to give you a rundown, the previous virtualization system that I had constructed was built out of uh, used parts that I got off of a friend, a friend of mine. Um, that system wasn't very reliable. It had some glitches in it where it wouldn't hold a, um, basically after replacing the backup battery, the CMOS battery, it still kept losing settings. So it was having some serious glitches on start, and it only had about four gigabytes of memory. Um, it had six, but I gave two to my brother. And a dual-core processor. And that sounds like somewhat impressive specs, and a lot of you probably were using the system for that. But when it comes to virtualization, um, the more testosterone injected into a system, and I'm not talking like big testosterone anymore. You can build a, a cheap system for, for pretty powerful in these days. Um, I'm, I'm talking about that if you want virtualization, then you're going to have to fork out a little more for some from some basic power. You want more cores, you want more RAM. Uh, thankfully, uh, triple and quad core processors these days are a lot cheaper than they used to be, and DDR3 RAM is super cheap. So if you can put the system together uh, for really cheaply, um, you can really, really unlock some serious power and do some serious work with virtual machines. So that's what I intend to do. I sold my previous system. I sold a couple more parts of my brother to uh, fund this. So why not take a look and see what uh, I just picked up. So I'll give you a rundown. First we'll start with the case. Now the previous system I had was in a standard full ATX size case. Your, your standard mid, mid tower computer um, by, well, maybe not as like a, a little bit bigger than what you would typically buy off the shelf from like HP or Dell or something like that. This one here, um, so uh, the one I had before was a fairly large case and it was bigger than it really needed to be. So I decided this time to invest in uh, a cheap case, but uh, an, an HTPC case, a case normally used for a, a um, um, home theater computer, something like a special home theater computer that plugs right into your television. So this one right here uh, is the Apex DP DM317 Super Case, which I got. I got all these parts off of uh, DirectCanada.com. So. Ah, they were one of the cheapest, so 
but the hay went on. I bought off of them before and they were pretty good. So Now in further research on this Apex case here is that uh, other than it's a different faceplate on it and it doesn't have the piano black finish, this case is almost identical. Oh yeah, and it doesn't have the nice power supply. This case is almost identical to the Antec Minuet 350. So here you have it. This is the the Apex DM317. Really tiny uh, uh, face footprint on it. You could really store, like, build one of these systems and store it underneath the shelf to uh, build uh, a home theater computer. You get a motherboard. My motherboard doesn't have it, but if you had a motherboard that had like HDMI out, you could plug it straight into a like a an LCD or LED television and then fire right up. Basically, <laughs> sound and everything. All you have to do is plug keyboard, mouse, and and um, uh, power cord into it other than just the HDMI and that's it. So taking a look at this, I haven't actually even had this out of the box. As you see, it was just, I, I took it out to look at it, but I didn't open it up. So this is my first time seeing it inside other than just pictures. Just pop it over and take a look. A nice thumb screw in the back, but it was on pretty stiff. Pop it open. Decent size panel. Taking a look at that, she's got, I'm assuming, a box of screws. Ooh, I'm in luck. It even came with a power cord. Yay, look, I don't have five million of those. Looking at that, she's got a uh, Flex, can I think, Flex ITX power supply? I forget what the exact word they call it. It's a Flex power supply. Um, 275 watts. The Antec 350, Minuet 350, comes with a 350 watt, 80 plus power supply. So it's really, this isn't as nice in the power supply area, but the, the case layout design, even right up to the moldings of this pattern underneath here and inside the case is exactly the same. The back looks the same. It looks like it's the same steel. And one thing I do notice by lifting it up like that is it's actually pretty stiff. It's not, it's actually pretty solid in my hands. It's really nice and sturdy. This comes out, this is like my media center computer. Yeah, I actually do have a computer attached to my television, so my who would have known. Um, that's really nice. It's got a mount for a hard drive right on the bottom. It's got a mount for a five and a quarter drive and another three and a half drive on, on the bottom, on the front. So you can mount like a card reader or a hard drive or something in there. Your Blu-ray drive or DVD drive in here and another hard drive right here. So you could have a card reader, hard drive, Blu-ray drive and uh, rely on external storage for everything else and you can plug that straight from your television. I, I'm not using it for that. I just wanted something as small as possible. I don't have a lot of room here. So, that's cool. And of course it's got the faceplate. Comes off. Yeah, I'll figure it out later. It's got all the headers. She's got firewire on it, but the, uh, the board doesn't have firewire, I don't believe. HD audio. Yeah, so that's the board. Enough said about the board. Let's uh, toss that aside here. Without bending anything. Ah. So let's take a look at what's going inside it. Now, I didn't buy the processor new. I got the processor cheap off the eBay, but it is a current one. Uh, they normally retail for about $90, I think. I got this for 55 off of eBay. This one is a, an app. I don't know if you can really see this, but... Uh, yeah, you can't really make it out. I'll read what it says. It's an AMD Athlon 2, ADX455, WFK, 3D2GM, NADIC AD, 1138APM. What's that mean? It was made on the 38th week of 2011. Natic 80 is the type of chip, etc., etc. What it is is it's an AMD Athlon 2 triple core processor, clocked at it's a 455, clocked at about 3.3 um, gigahertz. So yeah, it's it's pretty fast. Now because I didn't buy it new, she came like this. I didn't get a fan with it, so I have my fan left over from my Phenom 1090T. So I've got a really nice looking heat pipe, copper plate on the bottom, aluminum fins, and not a lot, very loud fan at all. Usually they're pretty crappy, but I plugged this one in, one in briefly just to see how loud it was. And it's actually pretty quiet, so I'm going to toss that aside. 
with my chip and processor. Um, the board is an Asus M5A78L LX, X, LX Plus. It is actually an AM3 Plus processor ready board. Supporting HyperTransport 5200 megabit, mega transactions, I think. So it's got... Hmm. It's got Serial 3? I don't think so. No. It's got some nice uh, SATA cables. So, uh, the I.O. faceplate that goes in the back. It's got a lovely manual with a CD. Or DVD. Let's take a look at the board. Ground myself here. That's pretty nice. Only two RAM slots. Uh, it's got the processor socket here. Standard AM3, AM2 uh, retention bracket, so it's not like a smaller one like the FM1 series have. Um, two PCIe 1X, one PCIe 16X, and a PCI slot. And one of the things I thought was pretty cool on the back of this is if you wanted to use this as a small server, it's got parallel for an old LaserJet printer if you wanted to connect an old printer. And also, it's got serial, so if you needed to uh, have that, have this as a small workstation that's connected to like a, um, a switch or in a server room that has like um, network switches that only accept the serial input on the front of it. That would be important. Not really important. You can get USB adapters and uh, laptops. <laughs> so what I'm going to use it for, I probably won't use that feature, but it's nice to have. So and finally, the, uh, the RAM. Um, I picked up a stick of Kingston Value RAM. It doesn't need to be fancy, so I just needed quantity over quality. And really, Kingston's pretty good quality. It's just not a bit like gaming RAM or anything. It's, it's KVR Kingston Value RAM DDR3 1333, 8GB of uh, memory in one stick. Now, I bought this. There's only two RAM slots in here. Uh, budget was tight, so I decided I'll get one 8GB stick now, put another 8GB in later, and upgrade this entire board in my virtual machine box. Two 16 gigabytes of RAM, so pretty cool. Now, existing hardware that I already had. Now, I bought this back last year. It is my uh, it's a gigabit network adapter. If I'm going to be using this machine as a server uh, slash virtualization test box, I was kind of thinking I'd want to have more than one uh, Ethernet jack. So I bought uh, that a while ago for my last system, and I still have it. I'm going to put it in this, although. I might have an issue. The case is um, uh, low profile brackets. It doesn't have. Uh, let me uh, see here. Pull this out. You see where this is? That's a full height. Uh, low profile is about that long. So it may have an issue fitting into the new case. So if if that doesn't work, I could either modify the, the connector or figure something out anyway. I may not put that in tonight. Other stuff, I have a left, this, this I've had for years. This is my, this is a Seagate Barracuda 7200.10, serial ATA hard drive, 250 gigabytes in size. Uh, I bought that brand new, she's actually still in her warranty. I only need 250 gigs for this uh, project anyway, so it's fine. And this, only one of these drives I'm going to use, but these are, uh, one's a DVD RW, and one's just a DVD drive. A DVD CD RW combo. Now, they're both serial ATA. The only thing is, I don't know if the DVD RW works. Um, I'm pretty sure this one does, so we'll try one and try the other. Nothing works, and we'll worry about that when it comes to it. But that's for the optical drive. All right, so this is running longer than I thought it would. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this video up into parts. Uh, this is the this is it for the unboxing side of things. Uh, tune in next time. I'll have the construction of this computer underway. Uh, I'm a computer tech, an A-plus certified uh, and Microsoft certified computer tech. I've been doing computer work for years, so you can actually see some tips and tricks that uh, I've used in the business for several years now. Um, thanks for watching this part of the video. Tune in next time, and uh, we'll have more for you later. Oh, and check out the beer reviews, too, so talk to you soon. Bye.